Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Today, I wanted to talk to you about plantaris involvement in Achilles tendinopathy, uh, because this can be a bit of a stumbling block for people with Achilles tendon pain, and it's very much under-recognized. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three signs uh, that you can spot in clinic that would suggest that plantaris is involved in Achilles tendinopathy. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how you can modify treatment if you suspect plantaris involvement, and also surgical options as well. Um, as ever, we've put a link to our free webinars uh, that you can check out. We've got a great series on uh, iliotibial band syndrome, lateral hip pain, lower back pain, and of course, Achilles tendinopathy. Achilles tendinopathy. So do check those out as well. So let's start with a little bit of black background around plantaris and its uh, involvement in Achilles tendinopathy, because that helps us make sense of some of the other factors. First of all, if we think of the anatomy, um, the plantaris tendon runs just medial to the Achilles tendon. So they're, they're closely related in terms of their anatomy. And it's thought that that plantaris tendon can compress uh, the Achilles um, around about the site that we might expect to see a mid portion Achilles tendinopathy. So it's thought to be a little bit like a compressive tendinopathy, like insertional tendinopathies might be. For example, insertional Achilles tendinopathy at the heel, where we think the tendon's being compressed against the calcaneum. So it can present then a little bit like an insertional tendinopathy. Now there are scans and investigations that can help us uh, identify this. Uh, ultrasound and color Doppler can be, can be useful. Uh, we can sometimes see evidence of a thickened plantaris tendon, which might suggest it's involved in Achilles tendinopathy. And more recently, UTC has been used uh, quite nicely in mascular tools work. So UTC, ultrasound tissue characterization. Now this is good because it can actually identify areas of the tendon uh, where we might actually start to see um, some, some tendon uh, disintegration, where perhaps some of the tendon tissue is replaced by more disorganized uh, fibrillar matrix. And this is shown with these red regions that show up then on UTC. And we can see that in, the image, uh, in an image on a UTC where you'll see these red regions towards the medial side of the tendon, as shown in Mascular Tools work, indicating the involvement perhaps of uh, plantaris uh, tendon in Achilles tendinopathy. Now, in terms of the um, pathology, there's been some really nice work from Van Sterkenberg, um, particularly in the, the PhD thesis that they produced, um, indicating some of these pathological changes that you might expect to see uh, with plantaris involvement. So as I said, you can have a thickening of that plantaris tendon. You can start to see adhesions develop uh, between the, the paratendon uh, and the Achilles tendon itself. And then you can start to see ingrowth of nerve and blood vessels as well. And some of the uh, pathology works sort of seems to show that the, the tendon almost seems to be almost attached uh, to the Achilles itself, um, perhaps then leading to irritation of the uh, Achilles um, and symptoms during loading. So there's a little bit of background in terms of the anatomy, the pathology, the kind of location of plantaris. So next up we think, well, what are these three key signs that plantaris is actually involved in Achilles tendinopathy? Well, the first one would be medial Achilles pain. You can see that that's where the plantaris sits. It's just medial to the tendon. And we can see with those UTC studies, it tends to be perhaps more medial changes we would expect. So if a patient's presenting to you with a Achilles tendinopathy, it's a mid-portion problem, and the pain is more medial, that could be one of our key signs. So that's the first thing to consider. The second is that it behaves like an insertional tendinopathy in that the pain is often worse when the tendon is loaded into dorsiflexion. So if this patient is complaining of an increase in medial tendon pain when loading into dorsiflexion, that should make us suspicious that perhaps plantaris um, can be involved. So first factor, medial pain. Second factor, 
aggravated when loaded into dorsiflexion, like a calf raise off the edge of a step or calf stretches. And the third factor is when a patient's not responding well to a tendon loading program. In some studies, I believe in one of Maschia tool studies, 16 of the 18 participants in that study had failed to respond well to a tendon loading program. So if you have those three factors, medial pain, aggravated by loading into dorsiflexion, hasn't responded particularly well to a tendon and loading program and you've given it a good period of time you've given it at least three months of progressive rehab we might really be consider plan, uh, considering plantaris involvement so the next step is to get appropriate imaging. So we could look uh, at getting ultrasound. If you've got access to it, looking at something like UTC may be an even better option. Uh, we have had cases recently where the, some of these changes in the tendon have been missed on MRI. So it's important to pick the right investigation uh, and perhaps team up uh, with uh, you know, a, a consultant for an ankle specialist so that they can, you know, you can work closely with them to decide the next steps. If you do think it's a plantaris that's involved, we do need to modify the rehab. Now, particularly if it's irritated by loading into dorsiflexion, we need to move out of uh, that at least initially. So we might look at doing our calf raises on the flat, our seated calf raises on the flat as well. So we're not going into dorsiflexion ranges. You could do similar things with things like leg press calf raises if you want to. So it's avoiding that dorsiflexion range. You may choose to, to focus on more isometric uh, exercises if they're better tolerated. And typically with this group, I try and create some change within the tendon by progressing the load rather than pushing too much into range until the symptoms have settled. Now then there's a bit of a debate as there is around insertional tendinopathy in general as to whether you push them into provocative ranges. Now my stance on this would be that yes, if it's tolerated, if there's not a lasting increase in pain, particularly in the next day, we might start to gradually work into dorsiflexion range, particularly if their function demands it. So if you're working with a hill runner, they're going to be loading that Achilles into deep dorsiflexion positions running uphill. So it's difficult to avoid that altogether, but we need to choose the right stage of the rehab to do it. Um, so it might be that we wait until that it's less irritable and we start to just gradually introduce some range and be guided in terms of uh, progression by their symptom response. Now, as we said, in some of the studies, quite a high percentage of people will not respond particularly well to a loading program with this particular condition. So then we need to think about the next steps. And this is where it can be really good to team up with an orthopedic surgeon, a foot and ankle specialist to see what uh, options they can offer beyond physiotherapy. So we've had uh, some clinics offering uh, local injections um, around the plantaris and Achilles tendon uh, to see if that might help to settle things down and improve the situation. So sticking uh, with less invasive procedures initially. Uh, if that isn't working and getting the results that you want though, you can uh, go uh, to surgery to remove the plantaris tendon. Now it's thought to be a little bit like the appendix in that it's, it's a, a very small small muscle it doesn't contribute a great deal to function so you should be able to remove it and its tendon without it having a negative effect so it's relatively low risk procedure with some encouraging results in the literature and um, some studies in, in athletes um, around 90% were satisfied post-surgery with around 94% returning to sport so it, it is one where I think if you're not getting the improvements you want, if you have those those key signs of medial Achilles pain, aggravated by dorsiflexion, if, if you're really not getting the progress, then I think it is something where we would you know team up with a consultant, ha have it tested out, see if that plantaris is involved. And if it is, think about modifying your rehab and think about whether you want to go on to those next steps, including you know surgery to remove it. Okay, so whistle stop tour then of uh, plantaris and its potential involvement in uh, Achilles tendinopathy. Just to sum up those three key signs again for you. Uh, number one, medial Achilles pain. Number two, aggravated by loading into dorsiflexion. And number three, not responding particularly well to a tendon loading program. That would make you suspect plantaris involvement. And then you need to modify your rehab by reducing dorsiflexion and think about the next steps in terms of potentially surgical removal if it's really not responding to what you're doing. 
Okay, do check out those uh, webinars I've put a, a link to for you. They're all free. You can sign up to those and uh, enjoy them at your, your own leisure. And uh, I'll look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.